In this video, we will discuss how to build your UI. Android has many UI controls you can use to build your UI. Android also has ways to group the controls together using panels. The UI elements are arranged into an inheritance hierarchy with the view class at the root. The standalone elements like button inherit from view. The multi-view elements derive from view group, which adds the ability to manage a collection of child views. A view is the fundamental building block of an Android UI. Views have a visual component to interact with the user and some coded behavior. For example, text view is a UI that displays the value of its text property. Edit text is a UI that lets the user enter a value into the text property. A button is a UI that displays the value of its text property, has a click event, and some type of coded behavior. Views are sometimes referred to as widgets. The main reason that view is preferred is because Android has something else called a widget. These are mini apps that can sit on your home screen. Because of the potential confusion, we will use the term view here. Many views are defined in the Android widget namespace. A layout panel manages a collection of child views. Its job is to calculate the size and position of each child. Children can give their preferred sizes and most panels will try to accommodate their requests. The panel has the final say though and can ignore the child's preferences if there isn't enough space to fit all the children at their preferred sizes. The linear layout is the simplest panel. You specify vertical or horizontal and it lays out the children in a single row or column. Grid layout creates a grid of rows and columns and positions the children in cells. Relative layout requires you to provide the relationships between the children. You specify things like the children goes to the left of this other one, or this child should be aligned with the right edge of the screen. This is a powerful and flexible panel and is a good choice for the root panel of a UI. You can nest panels too. For example, you could nest linear and grid layouts inside of a relative layout. UI views are typically created in an XML layout file. The XML elements are the view class names like button and text view. The file containing the XML is called a layout file. Xamarin Android layout files use an AXML extension. Android resources are non-code files such as images, layout files, and strings that you include in your application. Xamarin Android creates a special folder named resources to hold all of your app's resources. Android considers UI layout files to be resources, so they need to be placed under the resources in a folder named layout. The resources folder contains several types of files. It contains image files, icons in various sizes. The folder name indicates what screen density the contained images are intended. You supply the same image in multiple sizes and Android automatically selects the right one based on the device's screen density. The resources folder also contains UI layout files and values such as strings, colors, styles, etc. The file in this folder helps you to avoid hard coding these values in your layout files. You define them here and then do the lookup in your various layout files. Xamarin provides a UI designer tool in Visual Studio to make it easier to build a UI. Instead of hand coding XML, you drag and drop views from the toolbox into the design surface. Instead of setting attributes in XML, you can set them in the property editor. When you define a UI in XML, you are really instantiating objects. For example, a button element tag results in a button object being created at runtime. You use attribute tags in the XML to set property values on these underlying objects. For example, the text attribute in XML sets the text property on the object. The attribute names you use in the XML are not always the same as the names of the properties in the corresponding classes. Sometimes you can guess correctly, but sometimes you can't. For example, the closest match to the C-sharp typeface property is the XML attribute font family. The Android documentation for each view class has a table with available XML attribute names. Android requires XML attributes to include the Android namespace. By convention, the string Android is mapped to the Android namespace. The use of the string Android is only a convention. However, it is almost universally followed, so it is considered best practice to use it. The Android namespace is not needed on element tags, although technically it is allowed and the app will build and run if you include it. Linear layout requires that you set the layout width and layout height attributes on every element in your XML layout file. 
If you do not set both, you will get a runtime exception. Note that linear layout, frame layout, relative layout, and absolute layout all require layout width and layout height to be set. However, grid layout does not. Android supplies two values you can use with layout width and layout height that have special behaviors. Match parent makes the element the same size as its parent element, and wrap content, which will make the element just big enough to hold its content. In practice, use of these two values is extremely common. You can build fairly complex UIs with just these two sizing values combined with nested layout panels. The value match parent replaces the old fill parent value. They both work and do the same thing, however, fill parent is deprecated, so it is considered best practice to avoid it. Android lets you specify sizes in pixels. However, Android's best practice guidelines recommend that you avoid using pixels. Android devices come in a wide range of screen sizes and pixel densities. Specifying sizes in pixels is not recommended because it doesn't adapt to different screens. For example, pixel-sized elements render at different sizes on different devices based on the pixel density of the screen. This is unlikely to produce a UI that looks good on a wide range of devices. Elements are likely to appear too small on high-density screens and too large on low-density screens. A density-independent pixel is a unit of measure that will render as a different number of physical pixels depending on the pixel density of the screen. A button with a width of 100 dp will appear about the same size on a 500 dpi screen and on a 250 dpi screen. It will occupy a different number of physical pixels in the two cases in order to achieve this. Android best practice guidelines recommend that you use density independent pixels to specify sizes. Android chose a baseline density of 160 dpi. So 1 dp equals 1 pixel on a 160 dpi screen. A density independent pixel maps to a single physical pixel on screens with 160 dpi. The use of 160 dpi as the baseline density is historical. It is the dpi of the screen from the first Android device.